We at Channel Frederator make it our mission to bring you the newest, freshest cartoons on the internet because we're cartoon fans, just like you. Did you know that we've been doing it for over 10 years? It's true. This month, Channel Frederator is turning 10 years old. To celebrate, we're going to bring you 107 facts about Channel Frederator with the help from editor-producer Nikki and general manager Carrie Miller. Keep watching to find out how your favorite cartoon channel came to be and some of its fascinating history. Number one, Channel Frederator was launched in November of 2005 by Frederator Studios. Frederator and its founder, Fred Seibert, are the producers of some of your favorite cartoons like Fairly Odd Parents, My Life as a Teenage Robot, Adventure Time, Bravest Warriors, Bee and Puppycat, and more. Channel Frederator is the world's biggest network of animators. Number two, the original inspiration for Channel Frederator came when Fred saw comedian Julie Klausner's Cat News on Channel102.net. Channel102.net was influenced by writer Dan Harmon's Channel 101. Dan Harmon is the creative mind behind Community and Rick and Morty. Number three, Fred approached one of Frederator's former interns who was interested in internet video and asked him to build a website to feature animated videos. The visionary former intern thought Fred's adaptation of Channel 101 was very 2000 and delivered Channel Frederator as a video podcast formatted for the Sony PSP. Number four, the former intern was then 19 year old David Karp. One year later, David would go on to found the social media platform, Tumblr. Number five, Channel Frederator was the second video podcast to be featured in the iTunes store when Apple announced its video iPod. The first was Channel Frederator's sister show, VOD Cars, created by Fastlane Daily and Drive Impresario, Emil Rensing. Number six. One of Fred Seibert's reasons for creating Channel Frederator is that he wanted to find a way to meet more great filmmakers from around the world. Number seven. YouTube officially launched the same month as Channel Frederator video podcast. The idea of filmmakers being able to easily share their videos with the world was still a novelty. Uploading big files and even watching them online was difficult. Number eight. From the very beginning, Channel Frederator was at or near the top of the iTunes podcasts, and for a long time, consistently the number one video podcast. Number 9. Channel Frederator Chief Programmer Eric Homan is also the Head of Creative Development at Frederator Studios. While picking awesome cartoons for the channel, he was simultaneously developing the hits Adventure Time, Fanboy and Chum Chum, Bravest Warriors, Bee and Puppy Cat, and hundreds of others. Number 10. Eric Homan and Development Assistant Melissa Wolf contacted a variety of filmmakers to submit shorts to the first handful of episodes of Channel Frederator. Number 11. Channel Frederator's very first cartoon to air was Pendleton Ward's student film, Barista. Eric Homan met Ward when attending a senior thesis screening at CalArts. Number 12. Melissa Wolf helped program episodes and ran the Channel Frederator blogs. She became a cartoon co-creator herself with Ann Walker of Random Cartoons, Sparkles and Gloom. Melissa is now a development executive at Amazon Prime. Number 13. Melissa conducted interviews with almost every animator featured within the first three years of Channel Frederator. They can even still be found if you look way, way back in the Channel Frederator blog archives. Number 14. Melissa also came up with the Cartoon Hangover brand name, which would go on to be a cornerstone of the Channel Frederator brand several years later. Number 15. Eric Beck of indie mogul Epic's DIY Haboom fame made a Fredbot head out of paper mache that has appeared in countless promos. I still look at that thing every day when I I come into work. Number 16. The Frederator robot was designed by illustrator Arlen Schumer for the birth announcement of Frederator Studios in 1998. The image was colored by designer Patrick Rask, refined by animation artist Eugene Matos, and named the Fredbot by artist Frank Galinsky. Number 17. The Channel Frederator logo was adapted from the Fredbot by Annie Chu and David Karp. Number 18. After seeing the first episode of Channel Frederator, Carrie Miller signed up and joined the Channel Frederator production team two weeks after launch and has stayed with us for all 10 years. Number 19. Fred defines Channel Frederator as a little film festival in your hand every week. Over the years, we've literally featured thousands of independent filmmakers on our channel and tumblers. Channel Frederator has gone on to establish an entire network of animators, but more about that later. Number 20. Within a week of launch, over 1,000 cartoon shorts had been submitted for play on the channel. That's intense. Number 21. Channel Frederator was one of the earliest video podcasts hosted by Libsyn.com, still one of the best podcast hosts in the world. 
Number 22, Fred wanted Channel Frederator to have the kind of cool packaging he started at MTV and Nickelodeon in the 80s. Justin Johnson was a friend of College Humor co-founder Jake Lodwick and fit the bill perfectly. Channel Frederator has been well known for its awesome packaging and early promotional skits. Number 23, oh right, did we mention that founder Fred Cyber was the first creative director at MTV? He commissioned the famous MTV logo as well as the iconic I Want My MTV slogans and Moonman promos. He's also been responsible for branding iconic networks like Nickelodeon, Nick at Night, and Comedy Central. So this ain't his first rodeo. Number 24, David titled the podcast Channel Frederator and edited the first few episodes himself. He gave the show a signature snarky sense of humor. David was watching a lot of Adult Swim at the time, so he appropriated their signature style of simple type with elevator music in the background. Number 25. When David Carr created the first episodes of Channel Frederator, he liked that Fred Cyber would mail out printed limited edition promotional postcards. He used them for the episodes and they ended up being a standard element of every episode. Number 26. All of the music from the first few years of Channel Frederator was by composer Michael Carp, Tumblr founder David Carp's dad. Number 27. After a few weeks, David passed off editing and management of the Channel Frederator episodes to Frederator's then business manager, Michael Glenn, and head of development, Eric Homan. Number 28. Mike had never edited or written scripts before, but he got a brand new Mac laptop and took a three hour editing tutorial from David Karp. From then on, he was on his own. Mike went on to be post production supervisor at Next New Networks and fill senior management roles at Epix HD. Number 29. Enter and Lee Rubenstein did every job conceivable at Channel Frederator, including making his own awesome cartoons. He went on to co-found the more awesome Eat Sleep Draw Tumblr and Art Snacks, a monthly art supply subscription box. Number 30. We actually can't even count how many episodes have been uploaded to Channel Frederator, but we can tell you that there have been at least 950 videos uploaded to the Channel Frederator YouTube channel. Number 31. The Frederator preschool production Wow Wow Wubsy was pre-introduced to the world in an episode of Channel Frederator in March 2006. Number 32. Channel Frederator spotted Gravity Falls creator Alex Hirsch as someone to watch out for in December 2006 with the posting of his short film Imaginary Friend in episode 59. Number 33. Episodes 3 and 8 feature films from filmmaker Dan Meth, who later went on to create the viral video Internet People, and two full original animated series for Channel Frederator, The Meth Minute 39 and Night Fight. Dan is now a writer and illustrator at BuzzFeed in New York City. Number 34. Episode 8 also features Body Automatic by filmmaker Devin Clark. Devin went on to create the series Ugly Americans for Comedy Central. Number 35. Ed Scudder, co-creator of the popular web series Dick Figures, featured his film The New Guy in episode 11. Ed went on to win the Joe Robot Award for Best Use of a Robot in the first Channel Frederator Awards. Hey, I'm Nikki Price. And I'm Nikki Fong. And today we're here to tell you about an exclusive Pendleton Ward cartoon that he made in college and involves butt dancing. And the only place you can watch it is on the Channel Frederator app that you can download by clicking here. So if you check out the end, not only you get exclusive access to this cartoon, but tons of Frederator exclusive content. Posted by me. So check out the app and let's get back to the facts. Number 36. Fred Seibert produced several short series with Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon called What a Cartoon, Oh Yeah Cartoons, and Random Cartoons. Channel Frederator was able to show rarely seen shorts from these series like Zoomates by Seth MacFarlane, the original Fairly Odd Parents, the original Dexter's Laboratory shorts, and more. Number 37. In episode 3, Channel Frederator featured The Naive Man from Lollyland by J.G. Quintel. You might find that name familiar since Quintel went on to create the animated series Regular Show. Number 38, Darren F.C.'s short Scissors is featured in episode 68. She has since created the series Star vs. the Forces of Evil, which you can watch on Disney. Number 39, Ryan Quincy, creator of the short What Would Wolves Do, featured in episode 130, is the creator of IFC's Out There. Number 40, in episode 84, Channel Frederator ran Elizabeth Ito's Hot Cross Bunnies, 
Elizabeth has gone on to storyboard a number of feature films and episodes of Adventure Time. Hot Cross Bunnies was also nominated for the Badass Bunny Award in the second annual Channel Frederator Awards. Number 41. Vera Brosgall's short Snowbow was featured in episode 3. Her comic Anya's Ghost has garnered both Eisner and Harvey Awards. Number 42. Meredith Grand's short Polaroid is featured in episode 31. Meredith writes the popular webcomic Octopus Pie and was nominated for an Eisner Award for her work on the Marceline and the Scream Queens comic. Number 43. Before Lorelei Bove was doing visual development on just about every awesome Disney feature film, she was working on her short The Pet Shop, which was featured in Channel Frederator episode 51. Number 44. Leica Studios was just a fledgling studio when Channel Frederator aired their very first short, Dia de los Muertos, in episode 54. Number 45. Stop motion animator Kirsten Lepore's films Sweet Dreams, Craig and Walter, and Story from North America have both been featured on Channel Frederator. Sure, she'll be doing a little episode of Adventure Time this winter, but we're pretty positive that the true feather in her cap will always be the Frederator Studios in tag that she produced in 2009. Number 46. On December 16th, 2009, Channel Frederator went widescreen. Why'd we do that? Because wide is better. Number 47. In 2007, Frederator put together the very first ever Channel Frederator Awards, a live awards show that took place in January 2007 to show appreciation for the contributors and fans of Channel Frederator. Number 48. There are 18 recipients of the first Freddy Awards, 13 voted on by fans, and 5 juried recipients. Number 49. Independent filmmakers from as far away as Australia flew into Los Angeles to attend the awards show. Number 50. Justin Johnson, our chief promo producer, served as host in a show that was really more of a party than a show. The show part was filmed while the party was going on and then edited afterwards to present on the channel. Number 51. The Channel Frederator Awards poster and program were designed by Adams Morioka in Los Angeles who also designed for Sundance, Nickelodeon, UCLA, CalArts, ESPN, and the Metropolitan Opera. The illustration was by artist Frank Rocco. Number 52. John Lasseter received the first Cartoonist of the Year award for, as Seibert put it, seamlessly integrating his influential business position with his focus on maintaining creative excellence and integrity in all media. Number 53. The Instigator Award was inspired by one of founder Fred Seibert's nicknames, which he appropriated from Marvel Meister Stan Lee. It was awarded to the iPod. Number 54. David Karp received the Vanguard Award because according to Seibert, he showed us how the coming of Web 2.0 and portable video devices were going to quickly capsize the medium world we played in. Number 55. In 2008, Channel Frederator aimed for another live award show, this time in New York City. However, the studio ended up creating a virtual award show with the video submitted acceptances. Number 56. The second Channel Frederator Awards included 11 viewer voted categories and four juried awards. Number 57. Dan Meth received the second Vanguard Award for representing the earliest independent animators who were harnessing the internet to make a name for themselves and their content. Number 58. Marjan Satrapi was nominated as the second annual Cartoonist of the Year. Head programmer Eric Homan explained that because Persepolis has resonated with so many people in spite of or because of its perceived commercial drawbacks makes a mighty argument for there being a marketplace in the US for animation geared towards adults. Number 59. Recipients of Channel Frederator Awards received their own Freddy statuette, which was designed by illustrator Frank Rocco and manufactured by Clockwork Apple Studios in Brooklyn, New York. Number 60. The design for the second annual Channel Frederator Awards poster and book was by legendary font designer Leslie Cabarga. Number 61. The Meth Minute 39 launched as a program on Channel Frederator in September 2007 with the short Internet People. It went viral and was, until this year, the most viewed video Video on Channel Frederator. Number 62. The Internet People video was sponsored by the new social media platform Tumblr as a piece of quote branded entertainment. Number 63. The brass lines on Internet People were actually recorded at David Letterman Studios with members of the David Letterman band Bruce Kapler and Al Chez. Number 64. Because Tumblr launched out of the Frederator offices, David Karp had asked Dan Meth for a quick silhouette sketch of a person. Tumblr used this icon for new users for a long time until it was changed later on. Number 65. Based on the success of the Meth Minute 39 series, John McCarris from ad agency Digitas approached Channel Frederator and Dan Meth to produce the spin-off series Night Fight to be sponsored by Starburst Candies. It was one of the first brand integrated advertisements based on YouTube, and Digitas won OMMA's Agency of the Year award for the series. 
Number 66. Dan Short Drinking and Drawing inspired several live drinking and drawing events where groups of animators would meet up to drink, mingle, and produce a short all in one night. Number 67. Drinking and drawing events were held in New York City, Portland, Boston, Miami, Ottawa, and Los Angeles. Number 68. Contributors to the drinking and drawing films number into the hundreds. Number 69. In 2007, Channel Frederator started the first all cartoon social networking site, Channel Frederator Raw. It was the first place for animators and animation fans to network and interact with each other. Number 70. Channel Frederator's former intern, Lee Rubenstein, ran a cartoon news podcast for Frederator called Toon Fuse. Number 71. Fred Bits was a brief series of super short cartoons that ran as a spin-off program of Channel Frederator in 2010. Number 72. Superfan Carl was an on-screen host of several Channel Frederator episodes. He wore the famous Frederator robot mask that still graces Channel Frederator promos today. Number 73. Channel Frederator ran a retro cartoon podcast of all vintage public domain cartoons called Refrederator. Number 74. For several years, Channel Frederator ran a preschool podcast based around the Frederator produced Nick Jr. show, Wow Wow Wubsy, called The Wubcast. Number 75. Cartoon Hangover began as a spin off series of cartoons that were edgier than most Channel Frederator cartoons. Number 76. In 2007, Cybert launched Next New Networks, an online video company. Next New Networks produced episodes of Channel Frederator until the company was sold to YouTube in 2013. At that point, Channel Frederator returned to the Frederator fold. Number 77. Channel Frederator boasts a number of original programs on its current YouTube channel, with Saturday morning cartoons staying truest to the original podcast format. Number 78. In April 2014, Channel Frederator began producing cartoon conspiracies with YouTuber and animator Emily the Brave. Number 79. Channel Frederator ran a news show called Toon Buzz with host Sapphire Sandalo. While that show is no longer in production, Sapphire is returning in a new show called 60 Degrees. Make sure you go and watch the pilot. Number 80. More recently, Channel Frederator and Cartoon Hangover have been producing Toon up, exploring your favorite cartoon and animation-centric concepts in 107 Facts. The show has been a runaway success for the channels. Number 81. Currently, Channel Frederator's highest viewed video is a tuned up episode about Gravity Falls and it has 4.6 million views. Number 82. Cartoon Hangover's best performing video is currently the third episode of Bravest Warriors series Butter Lettuce at nearly 7 million views. Number 83. In 2013, as part of YouTube's original content initiative, Frederator revived Cartoon Hangover as a home for new original cartoons from Frederator Studios. Number 84. Cartoon Hangover launched the series Bee and Puppy Cat and Bravest Warriors, as well as such shorts as Manly, Rocket Dog, Dr. Lollipop, and more. Number 85. In 2015, Channel Frederator ventured once again into preschool territory when they launched a YouTube channel for young kids called Fred Vibe. Number 86. In 2013, Cybert wanted to take the idea of helping and working with filmmakers to the next level, so he added Matt Geelan to the team to launch the Channel Frederator Network. The idea was to help animators work independently on YouTube and beyond. Number 87. The Channel Frederator Network publicly launched on February 19, 2014, with the announcement that Simon's Cat was joining 130 other channels in the network already. Number 88. Channel Frederator Network's very first network member was animation vet Gabe Soir. Gabe is still a network member. Number 89. The Channel Frederator Network currently boasts over 2,200 independent animation and animation related channels in the network. Altogether, they are generating half a billion views every month and have accumulated over 40 million subscribers. Number 90. If every one of our monthly unique viewers at the Channel Frederator Network could stack an Eisenhower dollar coin one on top of the other, that stack would go 126 miles, which is into low Earth orbit. Number 91. One of Channel Frederator Network's newest channels, Vida La Verge, is a Spanish language channel hailing from Mexico. The channel boasts over 5.2 million subscribers and over 716 million views. Number 92. The Channel Frederator Network distributes channels located in over 77 different countries and on six different continents. We don't have any channels from Luxembourg though. Come on Luxembourg, get your act together. Number 93. The Channel Frederator Network has spawned several other networks. We have the Leaderboard Network for video games and gamers, and Cinematica for movie and TV buffs. And we have a few more networks coming soon. Number 94. Network member Johnny Phillips will be producing an original short with Cartoon Hangover's Go Cartoons. Look out for it later in 2016. Number 95. The Channel Frederator Network recently worked with Rhett and Link of Good Mythical Morning to utilize five members of the network to create animated music videos for their song Biscuits program. Number 96. 
Not that collaborations are anything new to Channel Frederator, Dan Meth and Lee Rubenstein ran the channel's first collaboration in 2006, called The Secret Life of Robots. Number 97. Channel Frederator Network member Yo Mama is a collaboration channel by Alex Negret and Zach James. The channel brings hilarious Yo Mama jokes every week and more. Seriously, you can watch a compilation of 100 animated Yo Mama jokes in a row. Number 98. On a monthly basis, the Channel Frederator Network sponsors a network-wide collaboration across all the channels in the network. To date, we've had over a hundred different creators contribute to these network-wide collaborations. Number 99. One of the network's most popular channels, Domix, was started by a 24-year-old self-taught animator based in Toronto. Dominic now makes a living as an independent animator. Number 100. The Channel Federator Network now has about 15 employees solely focused on working with network members and helping them succeed on YouTube. Number 101. If you could use the amount of time that people are spending watching videos on the Channel Federator Network, it would power a time machine to take us back over 4 million years before human, chimpanzee, and gorilla ancestors split into distinct populations. What a fact. Number 102, the Channel Frederator app launched on September 5th, 2015. This is the first time Channel Frederator has had a home on devices since the original podcast. 103, Film Cow is a member of the Channel Frederator network. His animated series of Charlie Unicorn shorts are one of the earliest viral cartoon videos. 104, animator Sam Green joined the Channel Frederator network in November 2013 and says, The Channel Frederator network has literally changed my life. They've allowed me to move out of my parents' basement. Number 105, Channel Frederator has been around for 10 years and it's not going anywhere. There are plans for tons of new shows and even original content for Channel Frederator, so stay tuned. Number 106, you don't rack up nearly 1,000 videos in your library without a little help. Channel Frederator thanks to hundreds of people who have helped us to get here over the past 10 years. Number 107, we've said it before and we're going to say it again because we mean it. Channel Frederator loves you. Thanks for spending 10 years with us and here's to 10 more. Frederator loves you. Thank you guys for watching this video and for 10 great years with Channel Frederator. We can only hope that you love Channel Frederator as much as we love you. We're looking forward to spending another 10 years being the world's biggest cartoon fans with you guys. And let us know in the comments what else you want to see 107 Facts on next. And never forget, always remember that Frederator loves you.